So for this morning, we continue on our series on true community, uh, the biblical meaning and definition of koinonia. And this morning, uh, this we will be covering chapter 6 of that book, headed as partnership in the gospel. Partnership in the gospel. Before we jump into the actual chapter. For the past weeks, I've been meeting uh, with this group discussing uh, a possible venture which they would like us to do, implement. Weeks, I, I think more than a month or almost two months na yata kami nagmiwi. I haven't really counted how many meetings uh, have already happened, pero always in the meeting they would be asking, oh, what's your role? What's our role? What's our role? And what's their role? Uh, they're not quite familiar with what they want to do. That's why they're asking us if we can joint venture with them. And like any JV, like any joint venture, uh, the details have to be mapped out. Because the project is, has a potential to be really, to scale. So, even though that group has so much resources talaga, the task that will be involved will also be something that we have to consider. Kaya every week ang usapan, okay, what's your role and what's our role? What's your, hindi nga pinag-uusapan how much is needed. So, but again, since uh, it's also directly and indirectly connected to ministry, uh, we've been discussing and we've been praying uh, where to move. So, kasi next week is isang pinakamatinding meeting. And uh, why such an introduction? Actually, that's very much what we will cover this morning. Partnership in the gospel. Partnership in the gospel. And most of the passages, and I, I think, uh, the chunk of passages would be coming from the book of Philippians. And in Philippians 1, verse 3 to 5, if I would request you please open your own Bibles. I didn't make a PowerPoint anymore since uh, we'll be covering or jumping from just a few verses from Philippians. In Philippians 1, 3 up to 5 in the NAS, it is written, I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always offering prayer with joy in my every prayer for you all in view of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. From this Philippians passage, we would see that the Apostle Paul was writing to the Philippian believers. And specifically in this part of this letter, we would find the Apostle Paul thanking the believers at Philippi. And we say this all because of what the Apostle Paul said. What he wrote, and he sinabi niya, I thank my God. The question we might ask, what was it the Apostle Paul was thanking God Almighty for that the Philippian church did for the Apostle Paul? What was it the Apostle Paul was thanking God Almighty for? Actually, maraming uh, pinagpapasalamat si Apostle Paul dun sa mga Philippian believers. But can I direct you to one of the important things. If you would notice in the verse, we would find that this was very much what the Apostle Paul was always thanking God for. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always offering prayer with joy in my every prayer for you all. The Apostle Paul was thanking God for the Philippian church for their partnership with him in the gospel from the first day until now. So what was it? Go to Philippians 4. Verse. Sorry ah. I mean, nabura yung sa part ng manuscript ko na yan, ah. What happened? Anyway, go to Philippians 4. 
Kung ano yung nagbe-beep na yun? Hopefully, it's not something, ano, no? Ah, yeah. <laughs> Kanina pa yan dito, eh. Go to Philippians 4, verse 10. I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low. I know how to be to abound in any and every circumstance. I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. In a very famous passage, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Yet it was kind of you to share my trouble. And you know, Philippians yourselves, know that in the beginning of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, no church entered into partnership with me in giving and receiving except only you. So this was actually what the Apostle Paul was thanking God for for the Philippian church. The Apostle Paul was thanking God for the Philippian church for their partnership with him in the gospel from the first day until now. Brethren and men, the Apostle Paul considered the believers at Philippi his dear friends, friends who are actively engaged with him in the spreading of the gospel to the other cities. Now, if we would recall in our study in chapter 1, if you would recall, regarding the Greek word koinonia, we would recall that the word used in our passage for today, yung word na partnership, in the King James, it's actually the word fellowship. In the Greek, it is the word koinonia. If we would recall, the word partnership or koinonia also communicates the same meaning, the same meaning as in a commercial business association or relation. Diba? Kaya yung intro natin kanina, joint venture partnership, yung gamit ng word na koinonia is the same word used in a business or partnership relationship. Now, when the word koinonia is translated as fellowship in biblical terms, we tend to think of a mutual enjoyment and building up of one another within the body of Christ. Like what we learned the past weeks. Believers need to be concerned for one another. Believers has that need to build up each other in the faith. I don't know if you remember yung last last week natin, yung kay Brother Dan, diba yung sinabi niya, bosom buddies, diba? accountability partner. Believers not only share God's word to each other, but believers are to be likewise accountable to each other. Now, hindi lang yun. Yung fellowship dapat ng mga believers should be like this. Believers are likewise to enjoy each other's company. We have to eat, uh, enjoy each other's company. Sana ganon. Sana ganon yung ano natin, uh, pagsasama natin. Hindi yung pag nagsasama tayo, we always think, naku po, makikita ko na naman si ganyan. Uh, that's sad. Hindi ganon ang biblical koinonia. Believers are to likewise enjoy each other's company. However, however, though dapat nag-fellowship tayo, though we share God's Word, we share the truths in God's Word, we share our experiences, we share how God's Word is helping us, sanctifying us. As we live through all of that, Christians should also recognize that we must not neglect our need to look outward, out there, sa gulo ng mundo natin, which is really filled with sinners in need of a Savior. Kasi ang challenges ng Christian churches today, we so each enjoy each other's fellowship. Yeah? It becomes, uh, how do we call this? Like uh, an exclusive club. Ano yun? Si Tito Dennis ko narinig ba na uh, in one of his lectures, parang country club na yung nangyayari sa, ano eh, sa mga Christian churches na ayo na 
na makipaghalubilo sa iba. We must not neglect to look outward. Outward, which is so dark, filled with sinners in need of a Savior. And we do that, we do that side by side as we build up and enjoy one another as we fellowship together. Men, as we fellowship, we join together to what? Yung pinaka-mandate sa atin ni Christ. To go out and make disciples. To spread the gospel. Yung make disciples, medyo, I'm not saying na na, na, na complicate na masyado yung make disciples na yun eh. Actually, the very simple of that command, yes, making disciples is directly being accountable to each other. But make disciples, how can one first be a disciple? Diba? You have to evangelize. Yun yung pinaka-command na yan. Make disciples. We have to go out and evangelize. Now, yung follow-through of accountability only happens pag disciple na yan, pag na-save na yan. So it's actually the command to go out and evangelize. And men, as we fellowship, as we join together to spread the gospel, we are in partnership in this task and in this goal. We are partners in this task and this goal. Our focus, our objectives is not on ourselves, but on those who need to be brought into the fellowship of God's people. And this morning, this is actually what we will cover. Two points, no? yung partnership na yan. We will define two important truths kung ano yung partnership na yan. Let's look at the first. Partnership in giving. The question we might ask, why do you think again did the Apostle Paul rejoice so exuberantly in the partnership of the Philippians? And here's another question. How do you think did they partner with the Apostle Paul in his missionary enterprise? You know what? The answer to that question would actually be found in verses 14 up to 16 from Philippians 4. And you Philippians know yourselves that in the beginning of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, no church entered into partnership with me in giving and receiving, except you only. Even in Thessalonica, you sent me help for my needs once and again. When we look at that passage in Philippians 4, verse 14 up to 16, the Apostle Paul wrote this part of the letter. The Apostle Paul was thanking God for their partnership when the Philippian Christians sent their financial support to the Apostle Paul. Hence the phrase, his partners in the gospel. If you would backtrack a little bit, so verse 10, yung binasa natin kanina, sa Philippians 4, his heartfelt gratitude for the material gifts the Philippian church, likewise, pinadala ito kay Apostle Paul. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned before, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak from want, for I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I am. I know how to get along with humble means, and I also know how to live in prosperity. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of being filled and going hungry, both of having abundance and suffering need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Nevertheless, you have done well to share with my affliction. Brothers, when the Apostle Paul wrote this section, the Apostle Paul was emphasizing in these verses that the Philippian church was the only one that entered into partnership with him in this particular part of his letter. It was only the Philippian church. The Philippian Christians were the ones who entered into partnership with the Apostle Paul. And they did that through their material assistance to him. And by God's grace, the Philippian church did this from the earliest days of their acquaintance with the gospel. It seems that the Philippians had apparently been taught that koinonia within the Christian community involved what? A working relationship. It's a partnership. The Philippian church recognized that they had a missionary responsibility. A missionary responsibility to those cities beyond them. 
And one important way they could fulfill that responsibility was to give to the ministry of the Apostle Paul. They teamed up. They partnered with the Apostle Paul through their gifts to him. Now because of this, the Apostle Paul recognized their status as partners with him through their giving. And interestingly, he not only thanked God for their partnership, but also assured them of a return on their investment. Notice closely what the Apostle Paul said in verse 17. Look at that. Not that I seek the gift itself, but I seek for the profit which increases to your account. But I have received everything in full and have an abundance. I am amply supplied, having received from Epaphroditus what you have sent, a fragrant aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. And my God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Men, when the Apostle Paul wrote this, the Apostle Paul was confident that just as he would receive a reward for his labors, the Christian Philippians would likewise share with him in that reward. Very much like a secular partnership in business. Diba? Sa secular business, yung JV, pag maganda yung business, both would benefit. The same thing as we partner with those who work in spreading the gospel. Now, you might ask, ano kaya yung benefit na yun? No, we're not teaching a prosperity gospel that God would abundantly supply you when you support. If it is God's will, praise God. But material benefits is not the only way how God would bless those who forward the gospel. Side note, nakita niyo yung kibenihin? Ewan ko kung totoo yun. Have you seen that? Have you seen that? Parang niririkant na ni Benny Hinn yung prosperity theology niya. Pero sumagot na si Justin Peters. Eh. Sabi ni Justin Peters. Uh, in not so many words. We have to see kung talagang repentant siya. Kung talagang repentant siya. But anyway, in this part of the context of the passage, no, yung context nito, so partners ni Apostle Paul, yung Philippian Church. And grabe, no? Um, ang daming pintantahan na ni Apostle Paul and talagang pinasalamatan niya si God Almighty specifically for how the Philippian Church supported him from the very start. From the very start. Nagkaroon ng onting puwang pero nag And sa dami ng churches who would have supported the Apostle Paul, itong Philippian Church ang talagang umangat sa mga tumutulong sa kanya. Hence, the Apostle Paul was really thanking God for the Philippian church. Not because of what they gave. Actually, he was thanking God of the very act na ginawa nila. Kasi nakikita niya, maybe in that part, how the Philippian church was really maturing spiritually. How are we with this? How are we with this? Truly, the gospel, kailangan lahat tayo involved. We are indeed partners in the gospel. Every Christian today has the same privilege with the believers at Philippi of being a partner in spreading the gospel. Each of us has the opportunity to participate in ministries far beyond our own endeavors. In our city, outside our city, and even if it is the will of God outside our country. Tatanungin natin, how can this happen dun sa mga Philippian church dati, di ba? Uh, if you would really look into it, no? hindi as, uh, as sophisticated ngayon. Dati, when you would send the support, talagang literally, dinadala yung support na yon. Traveling ngayon, kahapon, I was so amazed already with the app of Gcash. Familiar kayo doon? Nasyak talaga ako sa Gcash. No? Really? Pwede, bank ko na rin pala siya, no? It's a bank. Uh, yung ING, you can clear checks digitally. So, now, helping ministries, hindi na ganun kahirap eh. So fast, di ba? Uh, when, when I talk to a certain pastor in Iloilo, the text lang siya, o sige pastor, ganito, pray lang, and then later pag ano, pastor, ito na, nandun na. 
Kuha mo? Ganun, ang bilis eh. Ito, nung sa context itong kay Apostle Paul, this literally takes what? Weeks? Or maybe even a month? Or more than a month? Again, we Christians, we believers today, have this privilege of being part of this ministry. Man, how are we with this? How are we with this? And you know what? It is not just a privilege, but it is actually a responsibility for us Christians. It is not just a privilege, but it is a responsibility for us Christians. Becoming partners in the gospel is not just an option for the faithful Christian, but it really is a commitment and a responsibility. Ba? Sinabi na nga, in Mark 16 and in Matthew 28, that we are to go out into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. This is a command, not a suggestion or a request. This command was repeated in Matthew, Luke, and the book of Acts. And you know what? Our individual responsibility in fulfilling this command will be accomplished directly and indirectly. Directly is when we ourselves go out. And indirectly is when we support those who actually go out into all the world. We should participate in the widest possible way in the spreading of the gospel into all the world. Interestingly, as I was preparing this for the past days, no, binring up to ni Brother Peter sa meeting namin. Sobra. I think si Peter Martin ang pinaka-staunch advocate dito eh, sa grupo, no? Not that we are, the others are not. Pero si Peter lagi ang nagpapaalala sa amin. And in our meeting, diniscuss niya na gano'n. Yung sabi, dapat ganito, 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 ganito. And I just listened. And idinuduktong ko dito sa material na to. Yes. Yes. Ito yung isa sa mga main prayer items dapat ng church natin. As a church. Okay? We are helping out small pastors in different parts of the Philippines. Pero kailangan pa natin i-revisit how we can really do this more intentionally na mas matindi. Palaging sinasabi dyan is, pag bumalik si Christ, how do you think Christ will react to us? Diba? Individually, kung if we have so much time, individually, dami nating extra resources, what have we been doing with that resource? That resource was not really just meant for us to be personally used, specifically sa context ng Christians. Okay? What are we to do with that? And this part of the letter of the Apostle Paul reminds us of that. So, yun yung una, partnership in giving. Now, here's the second, which is the most important. Partnership in prayer. So after seeing and learning regarding the truth of partnering by way of giving, here's another important truth regarding the word koinonia or partnering. If you continue in Philippians 1 verse 18 up to 19, it is written, What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed. And in this I rejoice. Yes, and I will rejoice. For I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayers and provision of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Men, here's the second significant way in which we can enter into partnership in the gospel. And what truth do we learn from this verse? We learn that we can partner in spreading the gospel by regular and meaningful prayer for those who are taking the gospel message. Regular and meaningful prayer. Again, the Philippine believers are a beautiful, was really a beautiful example to this command. They not only partnered by giving, but they also partnered by praying. Just as the Apostle Paul expected results from their giving, the Apostle Paul likewise expected results from their prayers. I know that through your prayers and the help given by the Spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. You know what? The Apostle Paul needed and was very much thankful for their giving. He was very much thankful. However, we would notice on seven different occasions 
in his letters to the various churches. Paul either requested for prayer for his ministry or acknowledged that his readers were praying for him. Pag tinignan mo yung mga epistles niya, palaging ito yung isang hinihingi niya. Wala kayong makikita, if I'm not mistaken, na nagsabi siya, I need financial help. No, wala kayong makikita ganyan. Palaging sasabihin niya, please, pray for me. Or sasabihin niya, I thank you for praying for me. If you really think about it, as we study the Apostle Paul's letters, we would find for the Apostle Paul, their prayers were more important than their gifts. He could get along without their gifts. Diba sinabi niya sa Philippians 4, 11 up to 13? But he could not get along without their prayers. And because of that, his fervent request was always what? Sabi nga sa 1 Thessalonians 5, 25, Brothers, pray for us. Brothers, pray for us. From this very statement, we would see that his sense of urgency for believers to join him in his ministry was by praying for him. Sadly, sadly, it is very likely that Christians today have very much neglected the prayer aspect of partnership in the gospel. And ang mas malungkot, wala nang praying, wala pang giving. That is more scary. Again, ah, we're not saying na, wait, total naman, sinabi sa MOW, pwede kami mag-partners by praying, so I need not give. Okay, hindi ganun yun. Okay? It's not like that. Pero, how are we with this? Sabi nga nung author, ang ganda nun siya, too often the missionary is out of sight, out of mind. Christian churches and Christians today should always have this in their plans. This is actually a step that should be taken. The question is, as we are faithful to praying, how are again we with giving? Yun ang partnership na sinasabi ni Apostle Paul na makukuha natin from his epistle here in Philippians. And Brothers, men, ano to ha? hindi ito lang privilege. This is actually a responsibility for us. Um, I don't know, maybe men in this room have already done this for the past years. No, um, I'm looking at the next generation Christians din. Uh, pag tinitingnan namin yung younger generation ng Christians ngayon, Again, may mga young dito like sila Vince, no? sila JC, no? ito na yung mga young, eh. sila Jack, no? sis, magkakasama tayo. Oh. Kakasama na tayo ng edad. Eh, no? Tinitingnan ko, yung, yung younger generation, no? and even yung mga generation ng mga anak ko ngayon, ang pinaka-concern na namin, ako pag sinasabi ko, yung compassion, parang, parang ang nangyayari, it's all about them na. Not about them. And if that happens secularly, sa Christian, young Christians now, ang worry na namin, mga mamaya, wala ng compassion, not just for the lost, but those who are going out for the lost. And sana, as church natin, as a church, as we fellowship, as we koinonia with each other, no? and as individuals, ito yung isa sa mga important na palagi natin iisipin. Ito yung important. If we really think about it, di ba, yung mga missionaries na yan, hindi naman tayo kailangan ni Lord. Eh. Tama? God could provide for them sang ganun eh. But, God will also use us. Huwag na natin isipin kasi isipin natin sa giving natin, kailangan malaki, no? No, hindi naman eh. More so with the prayers. Eh, ang concern natin ngayon is yung discipline natin with our prayers. Kung tayo hindi disciplined in our own prayer time, paano pa yung mga people na dapat ipag-pray natin? Are we very intentional with that? 
If we are to be partners in the gospel, we must commit ourselves to pray for them. We're to pray for missionaries. I don't know, may top of mind missionary ba kayo that you're praying for? We're to pray for the pastors, the elders, the evangelists outside their country and in our country in a very consistent and meaningful way. Yung prayer item natin. Every person who goes out, every missionary, either home or abroad, should always be in our prayer items. We cannot leave this part of our responsibility to chance. Hindi dapat ito, para ay, nga pala, hindi. No, dapat discipline tayo. In order for us to be true partners in prayer, we must structure our schedules and prayer lives in a way that fulfills our responsibility in the partnership that we have committed. And again, again, not only in praying, but likewise in giving. Like what we said kanina, this is not just a privilege, but this is actually a responsibility. Hindi to option. Hindi to option. Our partnership in prayer should be not only consistent, but also meaningful. What do we mean? Our prayers should go beyond the general. Our prayers should be addressing specific needs and opportunities for those we are praying for. Kailangan specific. Hence, we get their prayer items. If indeed we are praying for them, if indeed we are supporting them. Bakit specific? Why specific? The very question, di ba? Why? Actually, pag tinignan ninyo, um, look at this. Sinagot niyan ni Apostle Paul. Paul was very specific in his request for prayer help from the church at Rome. Okay? Meron part. I urge you, brothers, ito sa Romans 15, ha? 30 up to 31. I urge you, brothers, by our Lord Jesus Christ and by the love of the Spirit to join me in my struggle by praying to God for me. Pray that I may be rescued from the unbelievers in Judea and that my service in Jerusalem may be acceptable to the saints there. Very specific. Kasi pag iniisip natin to, this, this is a real thing for the Apostle Paul na nangyayari ito. Rescued from the unbelievers in Judea. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Literally, papatayin kasi siya. That's how urgent the prayer request was. Pero ang tindi, no? yung prayer request na to, tandaan nyo, dinala pa to sulat na to. Ha? Sa atin pwede, di ba? Viber mo. Hindi na nga text ngayon, eh, di ba? Boom, nandun na kagad eh. Why specific? The Apostle Paul requested for prayers for his own personal protection. Specific. Bakit? When God answers specifically dun sa prayer item mo, aren't you just in awe and amazed of how God really answers prayers? Nakuha natin yun. Pag specific prayer item, kasi pag general yung prayer item, you could just brush it off eh. You could just brush it off. Pero pag specific, and then ang pagsagot, very specific din, Magda-drop lang yung jaw natin. How could that have happened? How could God have answered that amazing prayer item? And I've heard stories about this sa mga missionary friends ko. That they specifically pray. They don't ask, God. They just pray. And amazingly, God just answers that prayer. Pag specific yung prayer item, specific yung answer, hindi mo pwede sabihin chance, luck, or coincidence eh. Men, the Apostle Paul requested for specific prayer items. Success in specific ministries, he actually requested this to mga Thessalonian Christians. Pray for us that the message of the Lord may spread rapidly. Pray that we may be delivered from wicked and evil men. Kasi in context nito, nung hinihingi yung prayer item, as in talaga literally papatayin na siya. He was to be killed. And what happened? By God's grace, God answered the prayer. Paul requested prayer items like boldness in sharing Christ, for the right words to speak, for open doors to proclaim the gospel, 
for the rapid spread of the gospel. You would find that in Ephesians 6. You would see that in Colossians 4. You would see that in 2 Thessalonians 3. Today, those who are out there spreading the gospel have the same ministry needs as the Apostle Paul. They also need boldness in sharing Christ. Wisdom for the best way to do it. And for open doors. So that they would see all these opportunities. And one of the most critical needs, however, in what? Ministry is what? Ano yung sinabi ni Christ sa Matthew 9? Ano yung pinakamatinding prayer item? Pray that God would send out workers in the field. Are we praying for that? Praying for the workers and praying that God would send more workers. Kaya nga, men, if we look at the prayer items of the Apostle Paul, if we look at the epistle that the Apostle Paul wrote, no? Alam mo, kasi isipin natin, ah, para kay Apostle Paul lang yan. No. Very much applicable sa atin yan today. Ang tanong, how are we? Ang danger natin, di ba? Maka masyado na tayong uh, comfortable where we are. And by God's grace, wow! We make a pipa. We are here. We're here. Nice venue, right? Such a nice venue. Sabi natin, we're at the cinema. Not the perfect venue. You know, still, such a nice venue. Yung iba ibang ministries natin, sometimes we're in Jollibee, sometimes we're in our small Bible place in park and shop, uh, park and shop yeah. but there are so many people out there who are really just bringing the gospel how are we with that? intentionally are we really partnering with them? are we really very much involved in giving? and the more important question uh, para kay Paul sobrang importante is what? in praying Sa prayer item ba natin, naka-structure yun na nando doon? Like, you ask, Sis, bro, kamusta ka na dyan? Ano yung mga prayer items mo? What happened to you last week? Parang, uh, I have a friend pastor in Iloilo, Haro, no? Prayer item niya is, binabaha yung church niya, so nakakita sila ngayon ng isang venue. Akala ko yung venue, ipapakita niya, pindala niya sa akin. Oh, sabi ko, Kanto na ganun, tapos puro punot damuhan pa eh. Sabi ko, shucks, venue. Paano magiging venue yan? Dok, pinagpipray namin na ma- ma-flatten lang namin. Tapos yung mga church members, uh, tatayuan ito ng structure na ganito. O sige, tapos ako pa yung nagre-reklamo sa ko, bakit ganito yung, wala pa kami venue. Pero siya talagang, literally. O, meron naman dito sa, although to koron, diba? pag inisip mo, koron, ganda eh. No? Pero, this is, there's this pastor, na sobrang flourishing din yung church niya. Nagkakaproblema lang siya dun sa organization that he is with. No? Uh, one or two months, meron na sila nakitang lupa. Na ano, by God's grace, uh, ilang, almost a year na namin pinagpipray na paano na yung venue nyo. Kasi nga, uh, yung venue nila, tabi ng dagat. E sa koron, ang dagat dun, uh, since, uh, ano, uh, beach side siya, Pagka high tide, alam mo na pwedeng mangyari. Yeah? Binigyan na sila ni God ng lupa. Nabili nila through their giving. Through their... And ngayon, literally yung congregation, sila na yung mga nagko-construct. And mga five years ago, hindi ko ma-imagine na itong pastor na to aabot sa ganun. Kasi nung una namin silang pinutunan, nung nag-train kami doon, nila Pastor EJ, parang, shucks, saan kaya papunta ito, itong ministry na to? And ganyan, grabe, flourishing church. I'm not saying by the hundreds, ah. I think ang regular attendees nila, mga 70, baka 60 or even 80. Pero ngayon, grabe, as in, so amazed. So amazed. Uh, giving and also praying. I think, mas naging important is yung praying. But not neglecting the giving. Kaya nga, us, brothers, diba? we are in chapter 6 of true biblical community. Ito yung dinidiscuss natin, partnerships. Partnerships. Pag-pray natin yung church natin, GFC. 
kung saan tayo papunta rito kasi medyo marami tayong nililinis na uh, detalye pa sa venue natin. Ano? Uh, kung bigyan tayo ni God ng venue, na-excite kami lahat. Eh. Sa, yuck, pwede, dami na natin pwedeng gawin. Sana matuloy talaga si Tito Dennis sa kanya ang ginagamit ni God ngayon kung <laughs> sa pag-negotiate niyan. Eh. No, pag-pray niyo rin siya kasi mag-message sa tomorrow. That's why, brothers, men, in our breakout groups, ang isa nga doon sa book nga, ano, uh, nagbigay ng mga discussion questions. Eh. For our own discussions, no, siguro ang tatanungin natin, how are we with this truth? Partnerships. Top of mind ba talaga sa atin to? Or, hindi siya priority. Kasi baka mamaya, yung koinonia natin, sobrang na tayong happy lang sa isa't isa. No? Pero we have to look outside. We have to go beyond ourselves. So for our discussion groups, siguro it's more of an evaluation, personal evaluation and discussion. No? How are we with this particular truth of koinonia that we partner with those who are working in spreading the gospel. Sige, let's pray. Father, again, we come before you truly. We praise you for you're so gracious, you're so faithful despite us being at times unfaithful. Thank you so much, Lord, for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. We pray, O oh Lord, that as we continue with our discussions, as we just open it up for a few Q&A, we pray, O oh Lord, that our discussions would truly honor you we truly glorify you. Again, guide us and teach us on how to go about this truth of partnership. This we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.